Hello everybody! Hello Fast Kids! How are you doing today? We have a special episode today and Rebecca is with me today. Can you introduce yourself? Can you introduce yourself? Hi everybody! I'm Rebecca. So pleased to meet you today and to be with you on Fast Kids. Yeah, so good to have you today, <laughs> Rebecca. So we are gonna be reading the Bible story to the children, right? Yeah. Yeah, so listen attentively because it's going to bless you. All right, and when we say stories, these are not just some um, uh, fictional stories, you know, someone made up. These are actual events that happened and you know what? The Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So listen closely and the Word of God is going to bless you. Amen. All right. So what are we going to be talking about today, Rebecca? We're going to talk about the life and ministry of Jesus. Oh, such a nice one. Okay. Let's go. Okay. There are people who are very famous and known all over the world. You'll find their accounts and what they did in your history books, encyclopedias and journals. Some of them were rulers, inventors, scientists, military officers, crusaders, etc. However, in spite of their contributions to life, there's one that, I'm out, that outclassed them all and that is Jesus. Jesus, yes, amazing. What does the next um, line say? Jesus is amazing. His yeah. birth was a miracle. No one was ever born of a virgin but him. Yeah, and you know why? He had to be born of a virgin because, you know, man needed that perfect sacrifice, right? In the Old Testament, they would sacrifice bulls, uh, lamb, sheep, and so on, right? And they'll do it year after year, time and time again, to atone for the sins of the Israelites, right? And that means it's not a perfect sacrifice because they had to do it over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> but Jesus came, the Lord Jesus came, and he died once and for all. That was the reason why he came. Now, if he had been born from a father and a mother, earthly father and a mother, guess what, kids? He wouldn't have been qualified because you know Adam fell the first Adam right in the garden he fell and when he fell because he uh, did what God said said don't do basically so when he did it right he then had this fallen state his his spirit was now of a sinful nature all right and then anybody born from Adam from that time even up till now, is born with that nature. And that's why people had to be born again. Because if you're born from your dad and your mom, you're still born of that nature. That was the first one. So when we say born again, it means when you give your life to Christ, you declare the Lordship of Jesus and declare his Lordship over your life, believing that he died like we're gonna start you know learning about um, him right now you're gonna understand so much more about the Lord Jesus okay so when that happens you're born again in spirit right but I was gonna say something Becky the reason why he had to be born of a virgin is because if he was born of, a earth, of an earthly dad or earth, an earthly mom together right he would not have been qualified to die for man but remember the angel i think angel, angel gabriel came to her and you know spoke the word gave her the good news the announcement that she was gonna give birth to this savior of the world the messiah right and she received the word thank god she received it gladly and what happened jesus she became pregnant with jesus right she, she, he, you know, Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. He had to be that to be qualified to die for humanity. And that's why the uh, people called him son of man, right? Because he was 100% human being and he was 100% God as well. He wasn't born of a man, right? That's amazing. So 
I hope you understand right now, we're gonna carry on right now. Okay. His life was extraordinary. Yeah. No one ever lived free of mistakes and sin but him. His message is love. After 2,000 years, the whole world can't stop talking about it. His death was sacrificial. He died not for the wrong he did, but for the sins of all men. You know what? There's a part you read. His message is love. Let's go back there. Yeah. His what? It's his message is love. I like that. Is that, that what it says? One. Is that what it says? That's what it says. It says his message is love. Does that remind you of a scripture that says, for God so loved? I think that was one of the first oh, scriptures yeah. we learned in school, right? That's a good one. <laughs> I think that was the first scripture we learned in school. Uh, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only mm. begotten son to die for us and whoever believes and in he him. he loves us. Yeah. I think it's That's the moment love. we have to do our part. He loves us. He loves us, yes. And you know what? He, we were bought with a price. So he demonstrated the love of God by coming and he knew his purpose of coming, right? He wasn't distracted. <laughs> he wasn't distracted. He had, he knew what he came for. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But he stated his purpose clearly. He said, but I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Some other versions would say, that they may have and enjoy life. And we are enjoying our life. Yes. What Jesus did for us. You see, the more you know the word of God, the more you live a glorious life, the life that God has given you. Let's mm. go on. Yeah, that's so good. So yeah, true. yeah. Okay, so his death was sacrificial. He died not for the wrong he did, but for the sins of all men. He was buried, but his tomb was empty. He rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and he lives forevermore. Hallelujah. Just knowing who Jesus is does not mean that you truly know him. People have different opinions about who Jesus is. Some said he was a good man, Luke 18, 18. Some claimed he was a teacher from God, John 3, 2, while others saw him as a prophet, John 6, 14. However, the Bible gives us the true account of what Jesus said about himself. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's remarkable because um, this is why it's good to study the word of God, right? He said, I am the way. You know, we've heard, I've heard some people in the world say, there are so many ways to God. So many ways to God. No, listen to the Lord Jesus. He said, I am the way. You know, the word the is an article and is definite. That means there's no other way. Think about it. The indefinite one would be, I am a way, right? If he had said, I am a way, that would mean there's some other ways out there, right? But he used a definite article, which is the. He said, I am the way, so there's no other way. Yes, that reminds me of a scripture in the book of Acts, chapter four, verse 12. Not too sure right now, but it says, um, there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In fact, let's take a look at it, okay? So in the book of Acts, I think it's chapter 4, verse 12. Could be right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, correct. I was correct. Yay. Oh, I know my yeah. scriptures. Well done, Frank. Thank you. So children, also you can be inspired to memorize scriptures mm. because this book has it as well. Such a fun book amazing book and so you learn good. a lot like we're learning right now so yeah at chapter 4 verse 12 it says neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved did you hear that no other name mm. so if man has to be saved it has to be um saved in christ saved in the name of jesus yes, for there's right. no other name none mm. 
Don't let no one deceive you that there are different ways to God. There is none. Mm. Jesus is the only way. Yes. All right, let's go on. Okay, let's carry on. Again, he said, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John 17, 3. The stories of Jesus you're about to read are more than mere stories. They're about the man who changed everything about life. He healed the sick, wow. delivered the oppressed, raised the dead, performed miracles, and gave hope to those who heard him. These are a testimony of his claim that he is truly the Son of God and the Saviour of the world. Sit back and enjoy all the beautiful stories about Jesus. Happy reading and God bless you. Oh, amazing! I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. What an introduction. Okay, so now we're going to go into the first it says an angel visits mary so listen carefully to this one you're gonna love mm. it so colorful so we'll, we'll continue with this one right now all right okay. so becky over to you an angel visits mary an angel visited a virgin named mary he told her the greatest news the world has ever heard do you want to know what the news was all about? Yes! Let's read all about it in this story. Let's go! Come on! Let's go. Are you excited, everybody? I'm excited. I'm sure you are, too. There was a young and beautiful damsel who lived in Nazareth, a little town in Galilee. Her name was Mary, and she was a virgin. Mary loved the Lord and served him devotedly. Mary was also engaged to be married to a handsome young man named Joseph from the family of King David. Joseph was a carpenter and very diligent in his work. Wow. Just like Mary, he loved the Lord and was devoted to him. When people heard the news that Mary and Joseph were soon to be married, they were so happy for them and they congratulated them warmly. The preparation for the wedding began earnestly and was arranged by both families. One day, Mary had an unusual visitor. It was an angel. It was an angel, wow. Okay, what happened? The Lord had sent angel Gabriel with a very special message. What's this message? What's this message? Let's hear it. Hello, Mary, angel Gabriel said. You are blessed among women. Oh. Mary was surprised to see the angel and thought to herself, but why did he greet me in this way? Do not be afraid, the angel continued, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you are going to be pregnant and have a son. His name shall be called Jesus. He shall be very great and the Lord shall give him the throne of his forefather, David. Oh, wow. I'm so, <laughs> I can feel the anointing just as you're reading this. How can you read this and keep quiet? You know what? Just carry on. <laughs> <laughs> he shall reign over Israel yes. and the world forever and his kingdom shall never end. But how? How could this happen? I'm not even married. You're such a good actor. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry, Mary. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and overshadow you. The Holy Child will give birth. Sorry, I'm going to say again. That's okay. The Holy Child you will give birth to is God's Son. Mary believed the words of the angel and said, May everything happen just the way you said it would. Oh. Think about her response. Amazing. She's so humble. She She's was so just humble. so humble. I love it. Yeah. And then the angel left. Mm -hmm. Mary was going to be pregnant. But more importantly, now she would be the mother of the savior of the world. Wow. Some time later, Mary became pregnant just as the angel had said she would. Wow. Joseph was surprised when he heard about it because they weren't married yet. Yeah. So
also, he thought of cancelling the wedding quietly because he didn't want Mary to be ridiculed. Yeah, such a good man, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, such a good man. Joseph wanted the wedding cancelled because he didn't know Mary's baby was of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But before he could take that decision, something happened. <sighs> okay. One night, yes. an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said to him, Joseph, the baby in Mary's womb is from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Go ahead and marry her. Ooh, wow. When her baby is born, you shall name him Jesus. Yes. Because he will save his people yeah. from their sins. Yeah. As soon as Joseph woke up, he obeyed the angel's instructions and took Mary to be his wife. He did all he could to keep Mary safe and comfortable. After they were married, Joseph and Mary waited patiently for the baby to be born. Oh, is that it? That's the end. I'm just going to see if there's any more. Yeah! That's Already. it, guys. That's oh, the story. No. Already. And we were just having so much fun learning. Amazing. But wow, what an amazing story. Yeah, yeah. So that's how Jesus was conceived. Wow. Yeah. There is a part in yellow there. What does it, what does it say? Oh. Lesson for you, right? Oh, yeah. Let's read this. Yeah, look. It looks colourful. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. Mary believed God's word even though it sounded impossible. Did you hear that? I love this. Mm. <laughs> Becky, I love this. It says Mary believed God's word even though it seemed possible, right? It seemed impossible. Im impossible, even though it seemed impossible. Now, that reminds you of the life of a Christian. Mm -hmm. The life of a Christian is by faith, yes. not by sight. That's, That's why the right. Bible says, the just shall live by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight. That's so right. important. So when the word of God came to her, she believed it, you understand? And irrespective of, you know, it, it didn't seem scientifically um, possible. It didn't seem possible at all thinking of it from the point of view of science. Yeah, but she believed the word of God anyway. Yeah. That's right. So it says, God's word can make anything happen for you. Yes. Because it is dependable and trustworthy. Yeah. When you Did hear it, mm -hmm. be quick to do what it says. And Let, you'll be let's better. break it out. This is too big, okay, you know. Sorry, this I'm is too huge. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Yeah, this is too huge. I, I mean, are you listening to Rebecca? Everything she's reading. Now, let's take it like a few lines and then we we'll take a few lines again so let's okay, go again okay. so go from we're gonna go from the top from yeah? the top lesson learned okay so listen okay mary believed god's word even though it sounded impossible amazing so that's what you need to do when the word of god comes to you that's right yeah you may be looking at things around you you know like i always say um we live in a, a, a body, right? Just like you see right now, right? And we have five senses, okay? Uh, we have the sense of touch, the sense yeah. of smell, the sense of taste, the sense of sight, uh, the sense of hearing, right? Yeah. And we don't get guided through these senses. God doesn't guide us through these senses. In fact, there's a scripture that says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? God speaks to your spirit, not to your mind. All right? That's he right. speaks to your spirit. So when the word of God comes to you, if God says something to you, don't consider all those things you see with your five senses or feel or smell or touch, whatever it is, don't consider them. Believe it. Just like Mary. It's a good lesson. Mm, yeah. The next great. one. God's words can make anything happen for you because it's dependable and trustworthy. It's what? Dependable and, and trustworthy. trustworthy. Can you say it after us? It's what? 
is dependable and trustworthy. Hallelujah. That's yeah. Right. What's the next thing? It says, when you hear it, be quick to do what it says. Amazing. And you'll be better for it. When you hear it, be what? When you hear quick. it, be quick. Okay. Now, does that remind you of a scripture? Faith comes by what? Is it by seeing? Mm -hmm. No. Faith comes by hearing. That's right. Faith by comes hearing. by hearing the word of God. So that's why it says here, when you hear it, be quick to respond. Yes. Yeah. That's where the blessing is. That's right. right. And your uh, the response of the human spirit is actually what faith is all about. Yeah, and um, it says, when you hear it, be quick to respond. And what does it say to And you'll it? be better. Yes, definitely. There's always results when you believe the word of God. Yeah. There's always a result. That's why we always say the word of God always work. The word works. Yeah? All right. Oh, wait a minute, Frank. You missed something. Oh, we, we have yeah. an incredible Bible verse for you as well, which, oh! is, which is actually one of my favorites. So I'm super excited. Yes. <laughs> I told you there are memory verses, right? Yes. I told you. What's today's one? I'm gonna, I'm gonna memorize I love it right this. now. Literally, as we were reading that little yellow book, yeah. I was thinking of this Bible verse. Oh, I'm amazing. Here. It says, are you ready? Yes, we are. Learn this. Yes, we it's, are. It's amazing. Yes. With men, yeah. this is impossible. But oh. with God, Hallelujah. all things are, are possible. possible. That's Matthew 19, 26. Let's say it again. Yes. With, with men, men, this is impossible. impossible but with, with God, God, all things, things are possible. possible. Did you get that? What a scripture is that again? That is Matthew 19, 26. You know what, Becky? I'm going to remember this. Matthew, for the last time, Matthew. 19, 26. I'm going to meditate upon it right now. Okay. Matthew 13, 26. No. Oh, no. you got to really listen. You see oh, no. <laughs> it's Matthew yeah. 19. 19. 19. And what is it next? 26. Yes! Yes! He's got it! Yes! Matthew 1926. So, I can also do like this. No. After this program, I can go Matthew 1926. Uh, Matthew yeah. 1926. So, you know, sometimes I hear um, the man of God, Pastor Chris, talk about how he celebrates the Word of God. Maybe he's studying the Word of God. Yeah? Maybe in his room and he sees something like this that blesses him boy he responds you know what he would run around the house Woo! and that's like how we are excited now that's, that's right. how to celebrate the word of god because the word of god has integrity the word of god is such a blessing you see so yeah. this is the memory verse for the day make sure you remember it in yeah. fact you know what becky i think we're gonna ask them in the next episode what was the memory verse yes, of the previous definitely. episode? I think we should do that. Yeah. And yeah. would you ask me to? Yeah, I'll ask you to. Oh. Uh, get ready, Brian. I'm going to ask you to. I have work to do then. And get ready, everybody. You've got to do a lot of jobs because with yeah. God, all things, all things are, are possible. possible. Glory. Glory. So, everyone, fast kids, we hope you learned a lot. It was so much fun. Mm. And we did learn a lot it you know we were blessed right? yeah we were so blessed so that means you're gonna join us again next time all right but before we go right um we're gonna lead you in the prayer of salvation okay, okay. so just if you're not a child of god yet right if you haven't repeated uh, the prayer of salvation maybe someone lead you to Christ saying repeat after me um, oh Lord God uh, I, I believe Jesus is the son of the living God I believe he died for me I believe he rose again from there then <laughs> you are not yet a child of God because going to church doesn't make you a child of God all right mm. it is believing in your heart and declaring declaring with your mouth these yeah, things that's right. so we're gonna do it right now okay mm. So, for those who aren't born again, this is the prayer of salvation. 
ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Please repeat after me. Dear Lord, I believe in all my heart in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess that Jesus is the Lord of my life. From this day, I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I am now a child of God. Hallelujah. Congratulations. If you just said that prayer of salvation with me, you are now a child of God. Thank you for watching. Congratulations. You are now a child of God. Congratulations. So join us again, same time, next week for another lovely, lovely, lovely episode of Fast Kids. See you later. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.